Traditionally the biggest fleet of the regatta, we started a week ago with 165 sailors, but now we're down to the final 10. A duel for gold and six sailors chasing three medals. And there we see the Britain, uh, one of the British, one of the Australians taking part. So, three minutes to go to the start of this laser medal race. Jordan, how's that start line looking right now? Well, we've got an offshore breeze. As you can see from the pictures, it's quite gusty and there's lots of different angles and bullets coming. It's going to be, And there's a capsize right in picture as we do this. So that gives you some idea of how tough the conditions are going to be. Currently, the port side, the pin end of the line, was 70 metre advantage. In the last 30 seconds, it's been down to zero to 70. So, and there's significant difference in the wind strength up the, at the top mark. Um, so it's fluctuating a lot. The course is 1.3 uh, kilometres long, 1,300 metres. Yep, we haven't seen them racing in these conditions yet. These are our top four. The yellow bib of Contides, the leader. The blue bib of Wern and the third place. So the top four there lining up, preparing for the start with two minutes to go. Who can reel in Contides? Now, do you think... Um, the match race is going to develop between the Cypriot and the Australian. I think definitely something will be done. I think Pavlos will have a, have a go at it, but it, it won't be easy. Uh, as Jordan was saying, we're pretty close to the shore. There's a big forest here. There's some high buildings. The wind is trying to find their way between the trees, between the buildings. So we're seeing very difficult conditions. It's strong wind and... Um, I think something will go down and uh, we'll see if, if Matt can escape and, and turn things around. And if he wants to claim gold, he needs to place one boat between him and Pavlos. And I think Pavlos will do everything uh, to keep that from happening. Well, at the moment, Contides and Wern, the Australian, side by side out on the water, definitely keeping an eye on each other. And Jordan, how do you think that battle will work itself out in um, the next few seconds? Well, what could work out against them, though, is third and fourth are uh, going to have a bit of a match race as we, uh, at the same time. So it's going to be hard for Wern to bring that extra boat up and into the line. Uh, they're really not doing too much. You can see they've just sort of got their eye on each other. Just in the very right back of shot, you can actually see there's, they're lined up next to each other. It's going to be fun. It's, it looks a bit mild at the moment for my taste. Cypriot and the Australian at the top end on the right hand side there. So three Britons, two Australians, five other nationalities on the start line and some big battles coming up. But Contides, the Cypriot and Wern of Australia, they are fighting for gold. Four others are all in the hunt for medals as well. And the laser medal race is away. Three medals, six sailors in the hunt then. As we see the Norwegian Herman Thomas Gard closest to us, it's a clear start. Yeah, and actually not so much was going on between we, between Contidas and Matt where we can see them yeah in the top of the screen and uh He's just going to stay close, isn't he? he yeah, he's going to stay close, yeah. but Matt Wern has some serious speeds Speed. in, in yeah. these conditions. Uh, he is a very talented young sailor, and when it comes to hiking, uh, he is really one of the strongest, if not the strongest man uh, out there. Uh, I think what Pavlos is going to do, he's going to try to stay uh, on top of him uh, to prevent Matt from tacking. Yeah. But if Matt can go just a little bit faster and can get the tack in and cross in front, then will be, that will be in his uh, advantage. Yeah, so Matt tacked pretty quickly because Contitas was under him at the start line. Matt tacked pretty quickly to get out and get a nose in front sort of move. Contitas went with him, but 23 knots to Matt, yeah. where he lives. is Actually, Matt just made a tack right there. In front, yeah. Um, but 23 knots for Matt is, it's a normal light afternoon sea breeze where he lives, so this wind will mean nothing to him. So we're on board with Matt Wern of Australia, the 23-year-old who is trying to reel in Pavlos Contidas of Cyprus. Try and get in front of him, stay in front of him and hope that he, f he falls down the field so that uh, Wern can claim the gold medal. 
Yeah, there's definitely a big gust coming in. It was uh, down to 15, 16 knots, but it's back up to 20 to 23 knots. And in the laser, it's uh, key to keep the boat as flat as possible because then it's going uh, the maximum speed. So that's what they are trying to do. You can see it here uh, on the screen. They are hanging uh, from the tow strap in the middle of the boat, uh, hanging out and working really hard with the legs, applying pressure on the boat and uh, let the upper body do all the rest of the work uh, to counter the waves and uh, to make sure the cockpit keeps dry. Yeah, uh, I'll just say Sam Mates looks like he, you know he's fighting for third, and uh, he's having a cracker in the middle of the field at the moment too. I'm hearing there's a wind change. Let's go to Jenny out on the course. Oh, I think Evie just covered it. It was breeze was down for the start, and suddenly this dark grey cloud came over the city, and it has just pummeled in extra white caps, extra knots, just to make those guys and as you guys said, maybe the young guys hike that little bit harder. That's going to get them into the medals against some of the older guys out there. But it is proper windy now out on the race course. We had beautiful weather for day one of the medal races yesterday here in Aarhus. Uh, beautiful sunshine, a lovely breeze, and then a storm came in towards the end of yesterday and uh, lasted for much of the night, and with it came the strong winds. And right now we're looking at our leaders, the Cypriot, Pavlos Contides, and Matt Wern. Now overall, first and second. So they don't really care what's happening for the rest of the fleet, except for Matt. He needs a boat between him and Pavlos. But at the front, the bull uh, meets uh, aggression. You know, those two are fighting out for first, and they're also fighting for the bronze medal position. So that's something to keep our eye on as well. The other thing I want to bring into this, and Evie will probably jump on this in a sec, when we turn down wind on these things, with this much pressure, these boats are hard to sail, particularly downwind. They are skittish. They're like a little soap dish. Yeah, definitely, but I cannot think about the downwind right now. <laughs> I'm still really focused on, this, on, on the upwind, and it, it's definitely hard to sail. In, Lots in of this, water in the bottom of that boat. Yeah, in this kind of breeze, and I think it's just starting to rain as well, so definitely some big pressures uh, coming in. Yeah, we can see that Pavlos is playing uh, with the main sheet, which is the rope that he's holding in his right hand. Uh, what he's trying to do is uh, depower the sail. Uh, which makes it easier to sail the boat flat. So uh, he has all the ropes on his boat, his Cunningham and his Vang, which are the ropes in the front, pulled uh, very hard to, mm. yeah, to depower the sail and to keep the boat uh, more flat. That wind's gone a little right, Evie, uh, Evie uh, a little bit right uh, with that pressure. So that's why the guys out to the right of shot we're seeing in this uh, virtual reality uh, are looking to be the goods at the moment. This is a good battle. That's Thompson, I reckon. Nick Thompson leading the race next to Philip Bull. Those two are our leaders, yeah. and they are in the right. We've seen it turning between 235 degrees and, and 270. Mm. So that's uh, yeah, big changes. Uh, as we are close to the shore, it's very, very shifty. Um, but it's oscillating, so it's all about being on the right side at the right moment. Yeah, currently, I think this pressure is just under a cloud, so I think it's going right, right, right at the moment. Um, it's fantastic. Look how much work is going on. These boats, you have to understand that the rudder on these boats is quite small for the, and that you've got to steer the boat with your body weight. If those guys weren't leaning out and doing all that work with the sail, with the trim of the main, they wouldn't be able to steer these boats. They'd be stuck straight into the wind. You have to physically sail these boats. They're a very simple boat, but to go fast, you have to be very, very physical in these boats. You have to be strong, super fit. Yeah, definitely, and I'm pretty sure that's a good 25 knots uh we see here, um, and it's, yeah, it's true, Jordan, you need to be super fit. Um, you need to have very, very strong legs. As we can see here, like he's pressing the boat down with his uh, upper leg, with its quadriceps. He's trying to push the, the boat down so it's a bit flatter. And um, that's what's really difficult on a day like today. You know, you put a lot of energy in making the boat go fast, but you need to keep your eyes out for the pressure and also for the competition, as this is the final race uh, of the week. Yeah. So the battle at the front right now on this first upwind leg between Great Britain's Nick Thompson and Germany's Philip Bull. Herman Thomas Gard in the mix as well. Currently sitting in third is the Norwegian. Wow. I'm going to say this is interesting because um, Elliot Hansen is sort of not looking too good at the moment. He is sitting currently third overall. Um, so he's under threat for the, the podium, for his spot on the podium. Well, Philip Bull's charge to the front of the fleet uh, forces Elliot down uh, the leaderboard. Um, but it's early days yet in this race. And let's have a look at the two overall leaders. 
They're fighting each other for gold. Contides could lose gold, but is guaranteed at least a silver medal here. But can Matt Wern overturn him? That's very, very close racing. Almost, can you see, I'm just seeing if there's a little left-hander, I'm trying to look out the window and spot, it looks like there's a little bit of a left-hander pressure, but I'm just not getting enough time to look at it, so we'll see. I think the analytics brings it to us. They're very, very close together. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty unusual that uh, nobody, yeah, it's not unusual because of well, the conditions. So everybody's sort of in the in the middle of the of the upwind. Elliot Hansen sort of went left. He went the widest and went left, and it sort of cost him a little bit. Of course, uh, Contitas and um, and Wern have sort of gone off in their own little battle. I think they're trying to bring themselves. Well, Wern's definitely trying to bring it back into the fleet so he can get a body in between them. It looks like it's swinging back left a little bit, which so uh, that little pressure line I did see was right. Uh, is correct. It was from the left. I can just see him out of the window. Yeah, and I think at this moment uh, it's definitely Wern that's in the advantage. He's, he's yeah. a little bit in front of, of Pablo. He's, he's above him, uh, and actually he's the one in control at the moment. And he will do everything he can to to keep one boat in between him and uh, and, and Contides. We have the gold and bronze medalists from Rio here in Tom Burton and Sam Meach. They're currently sitting um, fourth and third. But no Tonci Stepanovic, the silver medalist, the Croatian, failed to make the cut, finishing back in 20th. They're just getting into centre on the course for those who are sailors back home. So dead downwind, they're dead downwind from the top mark effectively, so they could go either way. Um, as this battle goes on, so Tom's guard is starting to come through. So Tom's guard was seventh, I think, going into this race. Yeah, he was in a really good line of pressure, I think. He was going almost one knot faster than, yeah. uh, than the rest of the fleet just uh, 30 seconds ago. Just to give you an idea, they're doing about five and a half, between five and five and a half knot. Look at that, he's overbanged that just to get some power out of that rig. Look at the overbend crease. So if you look, there's a crease running from the back corner of that mainsail on the top of the boom up to the middle of the mast. And when it's really windy on a laser, that overbend crease actually can be quite good. Yeah, definitely. When it's this breezy, you pull the vang. The vang is a rope between the lower mast and the boom. You pull it basically as hard as you can, uh, you know, to bend the mast backwards and, and to flatten the sail. So it's yeah. easier to keep the boat flat and, and to, keep the, to keep the boat uh, at maximum speed. There you get a good idea of the distance and where they are on the course. I'd say they're about two thirds of the way to the first mark. And Matt Wern has managed to get some distance now between himself and Pavlos Contides. Wern needing to get a boat between him and Contides to snatch the gold medal from the Cypriot. And at the moment, Contides is sitting in eighth, Matt Wern in fourth. So things have changed. Yeah, definitely. It's full on. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I expected a little bit more of a match race at the start. We couldn't really yeah. see what was going on 100%, but I think Matt had quite a good start, actually, and, yeah. and some, some really good speed uh, yeah. right after and managed to, you know, take the, take the tech and, and, and stay in front. And um, he's in a pretty comfortable position at the moment, and he needs a good downwind leg and a, and a, and a good second beat, and then it can, it can happen, I think. If I was Matt, coming into this race, I'd know I'm going to be able to survive these wind conditions at peak level for a lot longer than anyone else, because I sail in this all the time. So I'd be just making sure I can get out and go fast, and that's what I suspect what he's going to do. The only difference to his home is it's going to be a little bit flatter. The water will be a little bit flatter for him. That's about the only difference. So he may even be going faster than he's used to. And a really good race by uh, Thomas Gard so far. It's a young uh, Norwegian sailor uh, who's yeah, pretty good in control here. Now he just uh, made the tech also, and uh, we will see him uh, coming closer to the mark and uh, making the tech on the, lay on the lay line. So here they are coming into that top mark. The Norwegian Herman Thomas guard looks like he's going to reach there first. The Australian just behind him. But the Norwegian be. is leading the medal race. 
but let's see what's happening behind Sam Meach in second as things stand. It's close though with Nick Thompson and Tom Burton all coming into the mark at the same time. You see the four boats behind Thomas Gar. That's where the battle is really happening right now as the Norwegian heads downwind. Sam Meach round in second. Nick Thompson there. Philip Ball in the mix as well. And Wern. Round he goes. So, at this top mark, Matt Wern has got enough advantage on Contides to go into the gold medal position. And Contides needs to start moving back up the fleet. He needs to close distance on Wern. Yeah, and we can see the, the change in conditions also. Like uh, earlier on, we saw a gust of 25 knots, and now it almost looked like Pavlot had no pressure, so the wind has definitely dropped. And on this downwind, it will be crucial uh, to look for the area where the most pressure is because the speed differences will be huge if you're, in a, if you're trapped in a lull, if you're in a gust. So that's why we see almost all of these men uh, looking backwards, not only to see where the rest is, but really to, to be able to catch that first uh, pressure. I just looked out the window, Evie. If I was on, on those boats, I'd be heading exactly on the job they are. And it looks like there's pressure to, to the bottom of screen as we see it on the screen. Um, so, and you're exactly right, Contitas just hit a lull. Like, as we get close to the top mark, we get closer to the shore, so the wind becomes more patchy. So um, that's what he really cost him. You could see and he had to do a full gear change right next to the top mark. So very challenging for these sailors. It's, uh, it's exciting. It's super exciting. Let's get an update from Jenny on the water. Well, it's pretty much exactly as you guys described. The storm cloud that we just saw on the first upwind was really sitting on the left-hand side of the course. That's why most of the fleet sailed out to that, the windier side. And now, basically, the skies are clearing, the sun's coming out, and the breeze, therefore, dying completely across the course. And as Jordan was just saying, it's so hard to tell when they're up at the top mark which way the next path's going to be coming down because essentially it's over the land and over the city and you can't really see it. So all you can look at is what's close to you and as they sail further down the course they get a bit more runway behind them so we should really see eyes out, eyes backwards all the time and then as they get to the bottom marks you really get a good look at the race course and where the next breeze is and as the skies clear it's going to be really really shifty coming off the land. Two boats now between Matt Wern and Pavlos Contides. So Wern in control of the overall leaderboard, holding on to that gold medal position. But the leader of the race is Herman Thomasgar. It's interesting, the, um, the whole fleet rounded that top mark in less than 100 metres. That's, um, that's some pretty close battles going on there. Nick Thompson seems to be flying downwind, as does uh, Philip Bull. They seem to be the ones with the most speed at the moment. I'll go a little bit deeper into that, actually, just to make sure. Um, Sam Meach charging as well. Oh, that looks like very different conditions than, than <laughs> 10 minutes ago. It's crazy. Media, GBR 209134 was penalized for rocking downwind. So Elliot Hansen has picked up a penalty for rocking downwind. Can you explain that? Yep, so that's rule 42. Um, you can't be uh, using propulsion outside. So under 42.2, there's a list of things, actions that are banned, and that is one of the things. So you're ooching or rocking the boat downwind. Uh, your boat, it'll accelerate it and create extra speed than the natural wind provides, and that's what they've uh, picked him up for. And so Elliot Hansen drops to the back of the fleet now. He started the day third overall, and overall, he's currently sitting in fifth. Now, let's fly to the front of the fleet and see what is happening there, because we have lead changes going on all the time between the Norwegian and Sam Meach. And at the moment, Sam Meach 
the New Zealander has just edged in front. And there you can see, you can see them right beside each other, cat and mouse. Yeah, they're really sailing big angles. So, yeah, we saw earlier on that Elliot Hansen got a penalty for rocking. So there's a fine line in the rules between what can and what can be done. So if you're rolling the boat and, and moving uh, with your body, uh, you can do it as long as you change the angle. So as long as you are going up and down, it's allowed. But if you are not doing that, uh, it's not. So all of them are uh, yeah, at a really high level, as, as Jordan was ex explaining, and they are sailing at, uh, on the edge and um, you know, going as fast as possible. And there's a lot at stake. Uh, and yeah, they're really, really pushing it. They're heading towards these two marks at the bottom of the screen. That's the bottom gate. Which way will they go when they get there? Too early to say at this point. Thomas Gart now edging ahead of Meech. And Philip Ball in the mix there. He has had a couple of very good legs, has the German. And his position at the moment is enough to get him a bronze medal. Mm. You can really see the darker patches on the water. Yeah. In the darker patches, uh, there is uh, more pressure. And that's what they're, they're looking for. As a sailor, you can actually see those patches quite clearly. And you can also see the direction they're moving in. So you know which way the wind's coming. So on a day like today with these little bullet gusts and a change of course by the sounds of it, I can hear them bipping. Thomas Gard comes to the gate chooses his mark and comes round as the course is shortened. No, so that's the sea flag change, of course. So change, of course, as Philip Ball rounds in third. But neck and neck between Meech and Thomas Gard around that mark. Now, the Australian and the French. That's Tom Burton. Round now with Bernard right behind him. So Bernal's in sixth. And was that a change of mind from the Frenchman? Uh, he just tacked um, to head over to the side he wanted to go. But here's the yellow bib of our overnight leader, Pablos Contides of Cyprus, who rounds that mark well down the fleet. And he's seeing the gold medal slip from his fingers. What can he do to get back into it? Yeah, he definitely needs to do something now. Um, but, you know, he won a silver medal in the Olympics in London. He's a reigning world champion. Uh, he's very, very talented. Um, so I'm pretty sure that uh, he has all the skills um, to make it right. But on the other hand, uh, Matt Warren is also yeah, in the lead now and will do everything to, to defend his position. They're still pretty close together, though. I must say that. There's, there's a little bit of a separation of the group. But yeah, and I think that Contidas, he will just try to sail the shifts as, as, as good as possible yep. because you can definitely make some, some huge gains when, uh, when the conditions are like this. But as you can see, uh, Warren was yeah, definitely controlling him. Yeah. Hansen on a nice... So there's different... The, line, the lines of wind that are coming down. This is not a stable day, so there's plenty of passing lanes today is what I would suggest. There's opportunity to make passes. And if I was the Cypriot, I'd be pretty relaxed. I'd feel comfortable that I'm going to get an opportunity. You've got a fast guy just there with them as well. In fact, both those guys are quite quick next to them. So um, Let's look back at that penalty on uh, Elliot Hansen of Great Britain. He started the day in third but he was penalised for rocking downwind and it is a penalty that is likely to have cost him a world championship medal. Yeah, so what we can see is that actually the boat is moving uh, from left to right and he is not changing course too much and that's probably the reason why he got the penalty. So the juries are really uh, looking at the, at the others also and if your mast is swinging from left to right without a change of course, then you have a big chance of, of getting a, a penalty. So we see him taking here, a, yeah, the penalty, a 360 degree turn, and now he's uh, yeah, well on his way again. Well, he obviously pushed it too far, and it's probably cost him a bronze medal. 24 years old, part of um, the Great Britain Youth America's Cup team that won in uh, 
Bermuda last year. Yeah, he so had a of experience. really, really good season. He was in the hospital uh, with a ligament reconstruction on his ankle and he came back and uh, winning in Medem Lake, uh, winning, uh, yeah, a lot of things and doing better than ever. And also during this world, he had a great week, great week so far. Back with the front two, Sam Meach and Herman Thomas Gard of Norway. And Philip Bull still consistently sitting there in third place. Jean-Baptiste Bernard's trying to close the gap on Bull. Bernard's out of the reckoning for any medals. But Bull holding on to bronze right now. Yeah. That wind seems to, they've moved the course, but the wind seems to have swung left as the, after they've made that move. I think this might be a quite a quick beat because there's, uh, there's not too far to go, I suspect, upwind for these guys. So it's favoured mainly left. I must say for Sam Meach, he'd be pretty comfortable in these wind conditions now, as well. Now, I'm noticing Matt Wern is slipping down through the fleet. Yep. Which means Contides must be closing in on him. Correct. There they are at the top of the screen. And that means, as things stand, that it's, it's really close. Wern and Contidas are back in the battle for gold. I'd suggest they're probably tied on points and it's just going to be the count back on, on the day. I'm just going to go and try and have a look. Yeah. But Philip Bull still racing his race, staying out of the trouble, just working on his technique and on his speed. He knows... He can't do better than bronze, and it's bronze he's got at the moment. So he'll be focusing on just holding on to that position as they come up to the top mark already. Now, who's going to come out on top for this medal race at this top mark? It looks like the Norwegian, Herman Thomasgaard and Sam Meach. The duel between them at the front of the fleet continues, and on this leg, it's gone to the Norwegian. Philip Bull, still in there, sailing consistently fast, steady, Philip Bull in third. I've got a feeling that uh, with this wind at this angle, it's going to be a bearaway set and a pretty quick run with very few passing lanes now because of the way the wind's moved. The Rio gold medalist Tom Burton of Australia rounds the mark just behind Jean-Baptiste Bernard of France. Now, there's Matt Wern. Where is Contides? Contides coming in right behind him. So, no boats between them, and that means that Contides is back in contention. He's got his hands on the gold medal once again. So a disastrous uh, upwind leg, really, for Wern. He lost a lot of places and the advantage over his nearest challengers, Contides. Yeah, so if Contida stays one place behind Wern, he doesn't even have to pass him, then he holds on to the gold. And I think uh, Matt Wern will try everything he can uh, to get one boat in between him and Contida so he can claim the gold. But I'm pretty sure that Pablo Swell will hunt him down now and um, make his life a bit harder. On to the final leg now as they head towards the finish line. Time is running out for Wern. He built up such an advantage over Contides but it's he's seen it slip away and now he's just got one leg to try and uh, uh, create a gap between him and Contides uh, well, I thought, did you think it was a penalty? I, th I, I, thought, I thought I saw Matt waving his protest flag um, but well, I don't good. see I don't see much going on Wern on the left in the blue bib Contides in the yellow bib. Thomas Gard still holding the lead at the front of the fleet, uh, just so you know. Uh, Philip Bull right there with him. This is an amazing battle. And you can see the tension on both sailors, you really can. The good thing is we're going to have the same situation with the laser radials. It's going to be even more excitement. The defending world champion in the yellow bib just but has to stay in touch with Matt Wern as long as one boat doesn't move in between them then Contidas will hold on to gold 
Philip Ball still in third. He's uh, third in the race, third overall. So the analytics show that Contitas is 144 metres back from the lead, Matthew Wern 128, and then Mike Beckett is just in front of him, six metres in front of Matthew Wern. So there is a potential here, especially as they get to that mark, and you can see Wern will be trying to get to the other side of Beckett, so he's got the inside overlap at that bottom mark. Here we go. Bottom mark. The Norwegian is round. He's off towards the finish line as the German bull. Comes round. Bernard's also in the hunt there. Sam Meach in third. Tom Burton in fifth. Oh. 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 But what is happening at the back? This is the battle for gold and silver. The Cypriot Cypriots get, holding oh. on, staying in touch with the Australian Matt Wern. As Nick Thompson rounds the mark. Wow. That was the move there needed to happen. He needed to sort of, Wern almost needed to slow up and then come up and inside the, Engl uh, the British sailor. It's reached to the finish now. Very hard to make a pass in these sort of, this angle. It's really a case of stretching the field out for the race committee to score the result. So Herman Thomas Gard crosses the finish line alongside Sam Meach in second place. Philip Bull will take third. A result that will likely secure bronze medal for him. Then comes Tom Burton. Then comes Jean-Baptiste Bernard of France. He's out of the medal contentions as the Frenchman. Nick Thompson across in sixth. But what about the battle for gold? Here comes the Australian Matt Wern. He's over the line. Now, is there anyone between him and Contides? There is not. Pavlos Contides of Cyprus bangs the side of his boat he celebrates and that came very very close to a silver medal but he did enough he fought back having dropped down the fleet Contides fought back to defend his world title disappointment though for Elliot of Great Britain Elliot Hansen who started in third place overall and I think we'll have to settle for fifth as things stand. In the end, finishing 10th, thanks to that penalty turn in the medal race, Elliot Hansen. But that is our gold medal winner. That is our world champion. Two world championship titles in a row. Pavlos Contides of Cyprus, the man who won Cyprus's first ever Olympic medal, a real star in Cyprus, and he continues on his long list of victories. Right, well, time for us to catch our breath in the studio. That was exciting stuff. Jenny, let's hear from our winner. Congratulations, Pablos. You're wearing the gold jersey. You defended the World Championship. You're excited. Amazing. It was very hard race to keep uh, an opponent like Matt uh, behind. Very shifty win up and down. I managed pre start to do a uh, team pretty good job. It was much bias on the left, and the two of us started uh, really near the committee boat. And uh, he managed to almost change the upwind to get away. And uh, at that moment, I was losing. I kept uh, my concentration till the end. And uh, yeah, two points are enough, uh, even one, and I'm uh, really happy. You won the Youth World here 10 years ago. Did you ever think you would be winning the World Championships 10 years later? Yeah, it's, uh, now it's for sure a special day, place for me. 10 years ago, I won uh, the Youth World title second time in a row. And now again, the senior title two times in a row. And feelings are amazing and uh, I cannot say much more. So you have a silver medal already. You're now twice defending world champion. What do you think this means for Tokyo? Yeah, of course, uh, the others will see me as uh, the opponent to beat, but uh, the talent and the quality in the fleet is uh, so big and so deep that uh, you need always to be on the top of your game. And uh, that's what I'm always trying to do, to prepare as much as I can and always give my best. And uh, until now, it's working. 
Congratulations, Pablo. It's well sailed. This was the moment he crossed the line and realized he had done enough to secure the world championship title to take gold back to Cyprus. An Olympic silver medalist and now two times world champion, Pavlos Contides of Cyprus. Fantastic performance from him, wasn't it, Jordan? And the way he came back after dropping down the fleet. Yeah, it was a fantastic performance. I think that we'll see something on that second beat. If we go, when we go to the race highlights, I hope uh, we might actually see what happened. Um, but, yeah, he, he, he played smart. The wind did drop down, so it moved away from Matt Wern's real benefit and then uh, back into his range. And uh, he also sailed Matt over to the wrong side of the course and took, the, took control. Brilliant. Well, let's look back at how that race was won. Yeah, so we got a fairly aggressive start. There was plenty of room, everyone down here at the pin end. Matt Wern got the opportunity to split off to the right here. Now, and then you can see Contitas went with him straight away. So we're gonna sort of focus on these guys a little bit. The wind was quite up and quite strong. Those guys went through the middle, and but Matt Wern had managed to gap away from Contitas with this strong wind. So uh, the Norwegian got out in front, chased by the New, uh, the New Zealander in Meech. And then I think Tom Burton from Australia was next round. So here's our top group going around. And as they get to this top mark, uh, for the first time we get to the top mark, they all bear away. And they're in sort of light patchy weather here. It started to drop out. We'd had a huge pressure come through and they just sort of started to back off for them. And so there was quite the battle going on. At the front, it was pretty consistent. There was a battle between uh, Tom's guard and uh, Meech. As they got down to this bottom mark, you'll see that Sam Meach actually does make a gain. And most of the fleet have headed out to the top of screen. The other guys, this second beat, which is the Cypriot here and the Australian, come off this side, but they end up on the right-hand side of the course. The right-hand side of the course is we look upwind. It's a way we describe the race course for non-sailors watching. And the wind moved to the left. So that move out to the right-hand side of the course push those sailors further and further back and as a consequence you can see there were no other boats in between and the Cypriot got right on the tail of Matthew Wern. Now they attacked each other downwind looking for a key strategic position. Wern was looking for another sailor to come into shot and he had the British sailor there with him but what he needed to do was to find a mark rounding, uh, an attack on that final mark rounding. You see uh, you can see Wern going over there, he knows he hasn't put enough boats between him and Contitas and you can see the joy of sheer joy of winning a world championship so few people get to do. Confirmation of the results of that medal race. Herman Thomasgaard crossing the line first, Sam Meach in second and Philip Bull a really good consistent performance from him in third but Matt Wern in eighth and Pavlos Contides in ninth confirmed Contides as the gold medal world champion. Matt Wern then had to settle for silver and Philip Bull for bronze.